Welcome back to Jerusalem Dateline. It's a chilling slogan found throughout the Middle East. On Saturday, we kill the Jews. On Sunday, we kill the Christians. It's graffiti written by radical Islamists. Recently, CBN's Scott Ross sat down with author Leela Gilbert right here in Jerusalem to discuss the link between the persecution of Jews and the persecution of Christians. Leela Gilbert is a California author who spends much of her time in Jerusalem. I spoke with her overlooking Jerusalem's old city and heard what she discovered about radical Islamic plans to first rid the Middle East of Jews and then of Christians. Gilbert arrived during Israel's 2006 war with Hezbollah in Lebanon for a three-month visit and decided to stay. And now, out of all this, a book. I was fascinated by the title, Saturday People, Sunday People. Define that significance. It's graffiti from radical Islamists that appears throughout the Middle East. In the best terms, it says, first comes Saturday, then comes Sunday. But there's a flag, a photo of a flag in the book that says, on Saturday we kill the Jews, on Sunday we kill the Christians. And that's where I got the title. Gilbert says even though many of the world's Muslims are not violent, their voice is drowned out by radical elements. There are a billion, what, 1.5 billion Muslims in the world or something? I, I don't think every one of them is a terrorist, right. but I think that the influences they're under now, both governmentally and in terms of mullahs and various uh, mosques, there's an influence that's inescapable. And under that influence, persecution of Christians in the Middle East has exploded, so much so that Christians are leaving in droves. There's a great danger that there will be no Christian community in the Middle East in the next hundred years, uh, maybe less. Where in the Middle East are we talking? Well, the countries that kicked the Jews out between 1948 and 1970, there are hardly any Jews left in those countries. There are about 10 countries. Now the Christians are being going through the same kind of abuse. You use the term in the book cultural intifada. Yes. What do you mean by that? I was referring in the book to the, Mount, the Temple Mount, which is where this is the most evident, but it has spread from the Temple Mount to greater Israel because the Muslim, at least certain leaders in the Muslim community deny that there was ever a temple on the Temple Mount or that there was ever a Jewish uh, root in this land. But that, isn't that why it's called the Temple Mount? That's correct. In fact, even in, in some of the Muslim literature from the turn of the century, there's, it speaks of the Temple and the Temple Mount. But this started with Arafat, at least the most um, public statement of it came from Arafat he, when he was dealing with Bill Clinton on one of these arrangements. And he said, well, there was never a temple there. Archaeological evidence thrown out by Muslim builders from under the Temple Mount shows that not only were there first and second Jewish temples at the site, but at one time, there was a Christian basilica. Today, neither Jews nor Christians are allowed to pray, sing, or openly worship at the holy site. Doesn't Islam believe that this is where uh, Muhammad ascended into heaven on a white horse? Yes, that's what they believe, and that's the only reason it's important to them. In fact, it's interesting, Jerusalem is not even mentioned in the Quran at all. So why is it so important to to the Muslims? Well, the Muslims have sort of found political reasons to emphasize certain things over the centuries. And whenever Jerusalem has become important, it's become important because of their own regimes, whether, wherever they were placed, whether in Syria or in Egypt or whatever. But now, of course, it's become the center of everything because right. they want a pan-Islamic empire. They do not want Jews or Christians in it. And that's why the focus is that there, were, this has, there are no Jewish roots here. It's all made up. Persecution by Islamists is not the only challenge for Christians here. I asked Leela how Christians relate to each other here in the Holy Land. There are many Christian sects, uh, denominations, etc in this land. How, how are they doing with one another? Not too well. No? They're not doing much better than the ones in America. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know, you've got Christians arguing about prophecy. I mean, evangelicals arguing about all kinds of things, much less the old churches who have ancient rifts within themselves that go back to the fourth century. So it's not surprising, but what we, what we know is that we all look pretty much the same through a jihadi uh, rifle site. And maybe uh, we need to remember that. Are you hopeful? 
I'm hopeful because of my faith in the Lord and, and in His way of working things out. Politically, I can't understand what's going to happen. My hope is in Him. It's not, that's the only hope I have. And, and I believe in Him and He's worked in my life in so many miraculous ways that I have to believe He's going to work in his, amongst His people and bring them together and, and protect them.